Welcome to the unit Merchandising Mix and Performance. In this unit, you will understand Merchandising Function Performance Measures. This unit comprises of two modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learned. By the end of this unit, students will be able to understand gross margin and gross margin percentage, understand stock sales ratio as a measure of merchandising performance measure, outline the concept of stock turnover, describe markup and ways to measure markup and markup percentage, understand the gross margin return on investment as an important measure of merchandise. The first module gives an overview of retail merchandise mix. Merchandise mix planning is a projection of the variety and quantity in detail of merchandise to be carried in stock to meet customer demand. BOM beginning of the month and EOM end of the month inventory levels are calculated from each month of plans. The basic stock plan is composed of staple items that have consistent demand and should be in stock all the time and has a highly predictable sales history with stable customer demand for a long period of time. The model stock plan breaks down merchandise needs according to factors such as classification, price, color, size, etc. to determine the requirements. The percentage variation method determines stock for a higher turnover rate. It allows for stock fluctuation and is best on the premise that the variation of monthly stock from average stock should be half as much as the percentage variation in monthly sales from average sales. The stock to sales method arrives at a planned stock level that is based on what should be on hand at any given time rather than on average stock basis. The weekly supply method is used when calculating a needed stock level by week. Here planned stock is equal to the average stock in a week's supply multiplied by the planned weekly sales. The main objectives of merchandise mix planning are to provide sufficient inventory consisting of right styles, sizes, colors, prices and other important selection factors. To time merchandise deliveries to correlate with customer demand and in line with the store's ability to stock, display and promote the goods. To plan purchases so that OTB is available at all the times, enabling the buyer to have funds available to purchase. Balanced assortment of merchandise is having sufficient breadth and depth to meet the demand of store's target customers. Assortment breadth is the number of different classification or items that are offered to the customer. Assortment depth is the quantity of each item of merchandise available. Listed here are factors for selecting merchandise. They are silhouette, color, fabrication, decoration or trim, workmanship and quality, size or fit, brand or designer name, product packaging, ease and cost of care, utility, price and fashion level. Before we go further, let us review some key terms used in merchandising. Stock keeping unit SKU is the smallest unit level of merchandise and includes styles, color, size and any other information that needs to be tracked. Forecasting involves predicting the styles and trends of the merchandise to be purchased for the customer. Long range planning entails looking toward the future 
for a business and project goals of five or more years. Short range planning involves looking at the most immediate concerns and setting goals of the business to achieve them. Top down planning involves goal setting at the highest level of the organization structure and management and then filtering the goals down to the other levels. Bottom up planning involves goal setting at the lowest levels of management and then filters plans up the organizational structure to the highest level. Stock turn is the number of times stock is sold and replaced within a period. Retail merchandising is a process of developing, securing, pricing, supporting and communicating the ret retailer's merchandise offering. It means offering the right product at right time at the right price with right appeal. The retail merchandise mix process involves these steps. Planning merchandise variety, controlling merchandise variety, planning merchandise assortment or support, controlling merchandise assortment or support, and merchandise mix strategies. Developing the merchandise mix allows the retailer to segment the market and appeals to a select group of consumers. Retail merchandising requires management of merchandise budget including planning and controlling the retail sales, planning and controlling the inventory levels, planning and control of reductions, planning and controlling purchases, planning and controlling the profit margins. The components of the merchandise mix comprises the merchandise variety that is the number of product lines, merchandise assortment number of product items, merchandise support the number of product units. Planning merchandise variety involves planning and controlling product lines. Retailers use many factors to evaluate product lines. They are the compatibility among product lines. These factors must be considered. Product substitutes, product complements, unrelated products. The physical attributes of each product line, these factors must be considered. Product bulk, product standardization, product service levels, and product selling methods. The product line's potential profitability, these factors must be considered. Direct and indirect contribution to profitability, calculations of gross margin, percentage and dollars. The role branding plays in the success of product line, these factors must be considered. How brands can distinguish a retailer from competitors? How brands can build store loyalty? The advantages and disadvantages of offering different types of brands, no names, vendor brands, store brands, that is private labels and licensed merchandise. The age of each product within the product life cycle, these factors must be considered. What stage a product is in to, the, to judge future sales potential? The number of products offered at different stages. The fashionable nature of each product line, these factors must be considered. Use of unique designer fashions as part of the store strategy. The factors that we have just seen, average risk of fashion merchandise, but also note high margin items with above average profitability. The market appropriateness of each product line these factors must be considered. How well the product matches consumption patterns and buying needs of targeted consumers. The relative advantage, affinity, trialability, observability and complexity of new product introductions. Market trends provide products that market wants. The impact of life cycle on product line acceptance. These factors must be considered. Targeted customers activities, interests and opinions. 
the match between consumer's lifestyle and retailer's image, usefulness of trade shows to identify product lines for targeted consumer's lifestyles, the competitive threat facing each product, these factors must be considered. Competitive conditions under which the product line is available, intensive, selective or exclusive distribution. Is the product line available to direct intra-type competitors or indirect inter-type competitors or both? The conditions under which each product line will be procurable, these factors must be considered. Availability and reliability of various suppliers, terms and conditions under which product will be made available. Controlling merchandise variety is both an art and a science. There is no specific rules for what should be included in the merchandise mix and what should be excluded. Two useful management methods are category management where each product managed as a business unit at the store level. Then ABC analysis where each product line is rank ordered based on performance levels. One must organize the merchandise mix as to the number of different product lines carried. Decide on brands, sizes, colors, materials, styles and price points. The goal is to ensure that product choice meets targeted customer needs. Carefully plan the number of units to have on hand to meet the expected sales for the brand, size, color combinations. Develop merchandise lists, basic stock list that is staple items, model stock list, fashion items and never out list key items and best sellers. This involves monitoring and adjusting the types of product lines that are added and dropped from merchandise mix. Two widely used methods to control assortment and support are inventory turnover and open to buy. Inventory turnover, it is the rate at which the retailer depletes and replenishes the stock. Open to buy is the amount of new merchandise a retailer can buy during a specific time period without exceeding the planned purchases for the period. Direct optimal variety and assortment strategies possible. These include narrow and shallow assortment, wide and shallow assortment, narrow and deep assortment, wide and deep assortments. Examples of narrow and shallow assortment are vending machines, news stands and door to day door sales. Examples of wide shallow assortments are variety stores, general stores and discount stores. Examples of narrow and deep assortments are specialty stores. Examples of wide deep assortment are full line department stores. Financial management tools are used to plan and control total amount in dollars of inventory carried in stock at any time. They determine how much a retailer should invest in inventory during a specific period. Remember, merchandise budget controls dollars and merchandise mix controls product units. We will consider calculating monthly sales index to project next year's sales using basic stock model to calculate BOM stock, using stock or sales ratio method to calculate BOM stock, calculating planned monthly purchases and open to buy. We now summarize key performance measures of merchandising. One, gross margin. Gross margin is equal to net sales minus cost of goods sold. Higher the gross margin, better the performance. However, better indicator is gross margin percentage. Gross margin percentage is equal to 
gross margin upon net sales, when you multiply this with 100, you get gross margin as a percentage of net sales. So, gross margin, another important parameter, gross margin minus operating expenses, you get net profit before tax. Then we have operating expenses upon net sales, gives operating expenses as a percentage of net sales. Discount stores such as Walmart have their operating expenses percentages much low than department stores. Finally, net sales is equal to gross sales minus customer returns. Other indicators of merchandising and buying performance include markdown as a percentage of net sales. Markdown as a percentage of net sales is equal to markdown amount in dollars upon net sales amount in dollars and when you take this percentage that gives markdown as a percentage of net sales. The less the percentage of markdown, uh, better will be the performance of buying and merchandising. It means most of the merchandise is sold at original fixed price by the buyer thus bringing profit and revenues as planned. Another important parameter, stock turnover ratio that is equal to net sales upon average inventory. It indicates how many times stock is turned into sales in a given period. It would also depends on the type of merchandise also. In general, women's wear will have higher turnover than men's wear. Lower price ranges will have higher turnover than higher price ranges. The rate at which your stock is turned into sales directly affects your sales, directly affects your profit. Since you can receive no income until merchandise is sold. A final performance indicator would be profit as a percentage of net sales. Profit as a percentage of net sales is obtained when profit is divided by net sales and you get that percentage. Now you have come to the end of this unit. To summarize in this unit, you have learned about the need to measure the merchandise performance and reviewed the key measures of merchandising performance. Thank you.